interesting one. Okay, so everybody knows about the African Football League. The African Football League was meant to be the Super League. Um, of Africa. It was meant to be a, a competition where only the best of the best get to play each other. And we got our first one uh, uh, last this season when Imamari Sundowns managed to win the AFL, uh, but it was a, a, a shorter one. It was, it was eight teams. It was your Simbas, your Petro Teluandas, your Sundowns, your Al Ali's, your Wee Dads. Um, and it was a very closed uh, with the idea that this was going to be sort of a pilot, sort of the first year to get everything. Uh, um, excuse me, to get everything, to get the competition off its feet. And then they come back, review and expand it going forward. Now we've gotten the news that apparently, allegedly, there are rumors that the, uh, the Confed Cup, the Confed Cup, the cup that is under the Champions League within our, our uh, CAF structures, has now been scrapped. And the AFL will essentially take the place of the Champions League as the premier tournament within Africa, with the, with the Champions League then becoming secondary. If you play AFL, that's how you qualify for the Club World Cup and things like that. So that no longer falls into the Champions League, which is very interesting because it poses so many questions that we can ask about what's going to happen going forward. One of the questions that we have to ask is, uh, will the format revert to Champions League format? Part of the wonder of the AFL was that a lot of those teams would not necessarily have to qualify to get into the AFL, right? They wouldn't have to qualify. It was uh, the top ranked teams. So if you had points, uh, you'd be able to be brought into the AFL. In the, initially, they had handpicked certain teams and that was part of the problem uh, with some of the criticism of uh, the AFL, that these teams are handpicked. How do you break in? How do you play? Now, if it's the premier tournament for Africa, does that mean that uh, you qualify by virtue of the Champions League? Which then, the, well, we qualify similar to the Champions League where you have to win or come second uh, within your league in order to qualify for this AFL. And what happens to the Champions League? The rumors are that they're going to expand the AFL to 24, to between 24 and 32 teams in order to make it bigger. Uh, that was the promise that was made, right? Currently, the Champions League is 16 uh, teams that qualify for the actual competition, uh, excluding the pre preliminary rounds. So that's probably going to take uh, the format of uh, qualifying by being number one or two to get into the AFL. But then also, what is the structure of the AFL itself going to be? Think about it, 24 teams, 32 teams, uh, you come into that. Europe has just adopted an entirely new structure for their Champions League competition, uh, where they're going to play a lot of it in league format, where each team is going to play eight games in one unified table before going to uh, a knockout type of competition. Um, and they're probably going to adopt that. But again, this raises the questions of why did you do this and choose this competition to come into Africa? Number one, it failed in Europe. It failed in Europe because it was meant for certain big teams to capitalize on how much money they could make for themselves through TV deals, through all of that stuff. They wanted a separate place where they could maximize their own earnings outside of the leagues because they felt as though it was unfair for them to have to share money with people who aren't pulling the same amount of eyes, the same amount of opportunities and sponsors into the competition. Right. So that was why it, it, it happened in Europe and it failed because the rest of Europe was like, oh, but guys, you've got another opportunity to make money. You guys decide who comes in. You guys decide all the stuff. How is that fair? Right. Uh, so why would you institute that type of competition within Africa and then turn around and say we have too many competitions right now? Therefore, because we have so many competitions, we can't uh, in in uh, in fairness. Uh, have all of this is going to be too much of a strain. So why did you come up with it in the first place? And if I'm being cynical about it, really, I think that this was just a pilot for FIFA to see how this would work in Europe. I think there was no plans for the future of this tournament. And I think it was just brought in again as a test. It was a testing ground. Africa was used as a testing ground to see whether this concept makes sense. And they learned a few things. One of the things that was the major complaint and one of the major things that had to be uh, uh, taken into account is the schedule. 
Mamadou Sundowns, to play the eight games that they played uh, uh, AFL, they had to take a month off. And that meant a month of games within the PSL couldn't be played because Mamadou Sundowns had to be away. And that means there's a box there's a backlog of fixtures, but also you'll be, uh, you'll be, excuse me, you'll be playing a, a whole bunch of games back to back as Mamadou Sundowns has been doing, trying to catch up. But then also, now you've got more games. What does that month look like? On top of the Champions League. Guys, one of the biggest weaknesses of African uh, competitions when it comes to football is that they are all boys team, they're all boys, uh, uh, all boys tournaments. Which means that Al-Ali will play uh, uh, AFL. Al-Ali will also be likely, will likely be the team uh, that is going to go into the knockouts of uh, the Champions League. So now you've created two tournaments on top of each other where it's going to be the same teams, basically, taking part in these tournaments, right? And what does that mean for those teams? That means my schedule has to accommodate a 24-team AFL that is not going to be eight knockout games, uh, well, four knockout games, and then you crown the winner. It's going to actually be more games. And then you still have to play Champions League and you still have to go back to your league. And these things pose a lot of questions. Time, fatigue, but also I need to have more players. It's just maths. If I'm playing more games, high quality games, I need to buy more high quality players. What do you do with your squad of 60? What do you do with the squad of 60 when you get knocked out of the AFL? What do you do with the squad of 60 when you can only uh, register 25, 25 members uh, within the league? What do you do when you look at the leagues themselves? How many players can you sell to the big teams in order for them to be where they are and to maintain that? And how does that hurt you? Then also, what type of opportunities exist for the other teams? Guys, it's so closed up. The, the, the point system and the way that CAF had done its points and the way the Champions League is such a closed loop. Kaiser Chiefs on the FIFA Club World Cup rankings is number 12 in Africa. Number 12. That means that Kaiser Chiefs, who has not seen another CAF Champions League since uh, the, the 2021 season where they got to the final, are still top 12. Still top 12. They haven't played a preliminary. They haven't played Confed. They haven't played any of those games. But they're, they're, they're 12. Amazulu, who last saw it when Benny was here, um, are number 23 in Africa. And the points difference between a case of Chiefs who have uh, a case of Chiefs and, and Al Ali is 101 points on the scale. Do you know why? It's because Al Ali, it's because We Dead, it's because Sundowns, it's because Esperance, it's because those teams play uh, a shoe ins to play this tournament every single time. So not only do they have the advantage of playing that, you would also give them another advantage of playing in a different tournament, which is why it didn't make sense from the get go. Like I said, I'm cynical about this. And my cynical says FIFA needed a testing ground for this concept. And it didn't work out. But now you can't throw away the African Football League name. You can't. That would be admitting defeat. So what do you do? You rebrand it. AFL is now the top. Champions League is now the second. We throw away the confed. But then you caveat that by saying if you play in the AFL, you can't play in, in, uh, in confed. And what is that, uh, ladies and gentlemen? It's exactly what the Champions League was. So this whole exercise was essentially uh, not a waste of time. I don't want to call it a waste of time. But it didn't make sense from the get-go. And I feel like this is CAF uh, admitting that it didn't work out. This is CAF admitting it didn't work out. Uh, and this model was not going to be sustainable. And it goes back to the conversation that I was having a while ago about this AFL, where I said, guys, why create a completely different tournament instead of creating tournaments that are going to foster and create more opportunities for more teams in Africa to take part? If you only ever have 16 teams in your Premier Division, if you only ever had 32 teams in your Confed, that means 48 teams will be able to take part in this thing. 48 teams. And of that 48 teams, a lot of them complain about what? We don't have enough funding to continue doing this thing. We don't. We can't afford 
uh, to put our time into this. So you close the loop even more. When you look at the teams that consistently get into the knockouts of the Champions League, right? It's teams that have resources. And it's not to look down on those resources. It's not to stop them from having resources. It's not to even, you know, get into any questions about that. Do what you need to do. But Kev, you need to make sure that if I am playing Confed and I do well, if I go into preliminaries and I do well, there has to be a sustainability that you can guarantee me when I get into the Champions League. Or else, it'll be a Marumo Kellens long run in the Confed, get knocked out. Uh, well, get knocked out and then uh, uh, get, get relegated in their league. You know, it's teams having to drive 24 hours to go play preliminary games sometimes in some cases because they can't afford flights, they can't afford any of that stuff on their own dime, not getting anything back from the prelims. Then you get into the competition and you've got more games, more travel with thin squads without resources. And do you know what's going to happen? Al Ali will beat you every time. Do you know what's going to happen? We Dad will beat you every single time. Do you know what's going to happen? Mamaruni Sundowns will beat you every single time and make it to the semifinals every single time. So they need to create a flaw. But now you're doing this thing that was a wonderful idea, I guess everybody was saying, uh, um, in theory. But now you can't even handle this according to rumors. Again, guys, these are rumors, right? So let's see how this is going to play out. But I'm not, it's, it's reverting back to the old system. This is all this is. Reverting back to the old system after giving this thing a try. And I guess you can give them credit for trying, but what was the point? You rushed things through. You rushed uh, 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 leagues into having to give up time and give up matches because nothing was communicated at points. You rushed it. Now we see how much it was rushed. I don't think this grows African football. And I think going forward, the ideas that have to come in have to be sustainable. And they have to be geared towards growing football as a whole on the continent. And sometimes that doesn't mean a $1 million grant that is meant to go to all the teams in a federation. To fund a federation and all the teams under the federation, which was the promise of the AFL. I don't know, guys. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think uh, they've thought a lot of these things through. And let's be honest, it's just a rebrand. This is going to be our... UEFA Cup, a European Cup, that rebrand, that's what's going to happen here. And I, I feel ah, that it was a waste of time. Don't even get me started about the Club World Cup, which in itself is quite problematic when you look at uh, the structure of it and how people qualify. Even worse in Africa, because the four teams that are always in line to win something will always be in line to get it, will always be in line to play it. Very hard to break into uh, that, uh, that group.